When it comes to postural rotations, often the spine takes up a lot of our attention because that's where we might feel it or that's where we might see it. Now, I would like to go to the pelvis because sometimes the pelvis is the source and unless we balance the pelvis, it's very hard to recreate an optimal alignment in the spine. Let's do a little movement experiment here to sense what I'm actually talking about. Come into a standing position with your legs parallel, hip distance apart, your pelvis centered, your spine elongated. And then rotate your pelvis towards the right side. I will mirror you. Now you are looking towards the right side and say this is a postural pattern. It's of course never that strong, but let's just assume. You wouldn't want to stand or walk like this, so unconsciously you will add a compensation pattern, turning the sternum forward so your nose and your sternum and your feet are pointing in the same direction. And we have now a spinal rotation, at least one. To rebalance that, the pelvis needs to be rebalanced. Clearly, come back to the center. Now, let's go to the other side. So you actually feel balanced afterwards. So go to the other side, rotating the pelvis towards your left. And I will talk from your perspective. When the pelvis is rotated towards the left, a short muscle, amongst others, but this is important, a short muscle, it's called pectineus, on your left side is held short. And on the opposite side, your psoas major, at least in part, is also shortened. So a big goal for overall postural balance when it comes to rotations, come back, is to rebalance these muscles and then address the compensations in the spine. Let's do this with a really nice exercise sequence on the floor. So we'll transition down into sitting and then into a supine position. Take a seat on your mat with your knees bent, hold on behind the knees and then let's roll down. From here you can roll down onto the floor, sliding your legs with you and then keep your feet on the floor, place them hip distance apart. The heels are fairly close to your sit bones. You can rest your arms at about chest height and then sense your pelvis, the weight of your pelvis on the floor. And if you like to work with imagery, imagine a heavy metal ball sitting on your sacrum in the center of your pelvis. And now you let that metal ball roll into your lower back. So your lower back is imprinting into the mat. You can slightly lift the pelvis off the floor and you feel the front of the hips open. And then you let the pelvis roll back onto the floor and that ball centers right in the middle. Let's do this one more time. You tilt the pelvis back by engaging your pelvic floor and abdominal muscles. The lower back softens and then the front of your hip joints open. And then you let the pelvis settle again until the ball centers in the middle of your pelvis on your sacrum. From here, take your right knee out to the side as far as it goes, and then you will feel there's a point where your pelvis is rotating with the leg and you let it until your leg is resting on the floor. And then you tilt your pelvis back just the way you did before and you open your left hip, hip joint in the front. Let that hip sink again. And then let that side of your pelvis come down to the floor, the pelvis centers and the leg follows. Tilt the pelvis back, lift it just off the floor let it settle on the floor again and change side. So you take your left knee out to the side as far as it goes. And now let that imaginary ball, if that's in your imagery, let that roll to the left until your left leg settles on the floor. Tilt the pelvis back on the right side, open the front of the hip and then let it settle and then center the pelvis and let the leg follow. Tilt the pelvis back, just let the lower back open, let it settle and then rest your pelvis. Let's do this one more time. So you are taking your leg out to the side and that short hip flexor muscle I talked about before, it's also an adductor and it's right now lengthening. And then by tilting the pelvis back, you lengthen that deep hip flexor, your psoas major, at least in part. And then you let the pelvis settle again 
softening across the front of the hip, engaging the muscle you just lengthened on your right side slightly. Tilt the pelvis back, just for a sense of rebalancing. Settle the pelvis, go to your left side. So first the leg, lengthening that pectineus. You let the pelvis rotate, pectineus on this side lengthening too. You tilt the pelvis back, you open the hip flexor muscles, and then you let them soften as the pelvis settles, and then you let that knee follow. One more time, tilt the pelvis back. This time curl up a little bit higher, so have even more opening to the front of the hip and then let the pelvis settle on the floor. To finish, I want to transition up into sitting and it's part of the combination. So we're unwinding rotational patterns in the pelvis, balanced movement and I want to integrate a little bit with strength. So engage your abdominals lightly to start. Float one leg into a tabletop position knee above the hip. Engage a bit more. Other leg, you're balancing your pelvis. Connect the legs. Draw them really close. And then lift your head and your shoulders off the floor. Curl. Press your legs into the hands to curl up and then sit really tall. Beautiful exercise to assist and sustain the balance in the pelvis and therefore support the alignment of your spine. If you would like to learn more about functional anatomy, join me in the online course Anatomy201 at yogajournal.com. <laughs>